9to5Mac dove into some iOS 14 code and found a new iPhone model that we weren't anticipating on coming out, which is why I doubt this one a little bit. Maybe they're looking so far into it, there's prototypes that aren't even coming out, but I wanted to speculate on the idea of this model, which some people thought was coming. Now that there's some legitimate reports for it, makes you think, and it makes you think a lot. Let's begin. So 9to5Mac refers to this as an iPhone 9 Plus, which essentially means that there will be two size variants of the iPhone SE 2 we've been speculating on for, it feels like, years. But now as we're getting closer to the release, we're well aware that it's essentially an iPhone 8, same form factor, same screen, same home button. The only differences are updated CPU with the A13 chip and an updated camera that would likely bring over some iPhone 11 features like night mode and portrait mode just with the standard lens. But now that we're hearing reports of the iPhone 9 plus it gets me a little bit confused because it could very easily be priced in a way that people might not see the iPhone 11 or 10R being as worth it if you don't care that much about the display. Maybe you care about the display in different aspects though because obviously when we look at the iPhone 8 plus that has some more standard bezels on it it's not as futuristic looking it's just the standard 16 by 9 rectangle and it does not look like a phone from 2020. However one advantage that iPhone 8 plus still has over the iPhone 11 and 10R is a higher pixel density and yes, full 1080p, which here on the internet, Fandroids would have you believe that's the most important thing in a smartphone. But as sales numbers have proven, yeah, I don't think most people really care that much. They will look at the iPhone 11 and they will look at the iPhone 8 Plus and think, yeah, the iPhone 11 has the better display because it looks cooler. Whereas, you know, some techie guy might say, actually, the iPhone 8 Plus has a 401 pixel per inch and it goes 1920 by 1080, so it's much clearer, much better display and no one cares but for those who do this could end up being a very affordable and yet still powerful option because if we had an iPhone 8 plus with an a13 chip plus the big advantage over the standard iPhone SE 2 or you know the iPhone 8 version now you have dual camera which begs the question do you keep the telephoto lens that the iPhone 8 plus has and just make it better or make it the same maybe using the CPU just make the cameras perform better via software but don't really do much to the hardware so you know night mode and stuff is a available on the iPhone 9 Plus, but you don't have that ultra-wide support. Or, which begs another question, which I think is interesting, do you swap out that telephoto lens for an ultra-wide lens? Given that's what they did with the iPhone 11, which also has a dual camera, do you give it that camera system and then just make pretty much the only differentiating factor the front display and, of course, the biometric? So iPhone 11 relies on Face ID. iPhone 9 Plus would rely on Touch ID, standard home button, nothing fancy. It's not even an in-display fingerprint reader. But but it would be significantly cheaper. So could that end up butchering some of the sales of the iPhone 11? Maybe, but keep in mind, if this thing is launching potentially in the next couple months, the peak of iPhone 11 sales has probably already taken place. You know, most people bought it when it came out and it's been really, really popular since then. But as more time goes on, sales fall down and down as we get closer to the next iPhone release cycle. So maybe Apple doesn't care if this new 9 Plus or whatever would start to X some of the sales of the iPhone 10R and 11. And the price point is also a tricky part to speculate on because lots of reports have been telling us that the regular iPhone 9 is going to start at $400. So getting a dual camera, a 1080p display, a better battery life out of the iPhone 9 Plus, what do you price that at? $100 more? Some people on Twitter speculated it would only be $50 more. In my opinion, that's way too close for what you're getting out of it. So my best bet is $500, which kind of sits fairly flush with the rest of the lineup. You know, you have iPhone 10R at $600. You have the iPhone 11 at $700 and then you have down the line iPhone 9 Plus at $500 and iPhone 9 at $400. That's just nice little simple increments of $100 each but it allows people to kind of prioritize do they want something with just really good performance and save some money or do you want something with a really good looking display? Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are very comfortable with the home button, very comfortable with touch ID, they're not interested in the whole gesture control thing so maybe providing updated options that still have really good cameras and really good CPUs so they continue to get years of updates. Maybe there's a market there. I don't know necessarily if it's a huge one, but I could definitely think of people in my personal life that would love to have just a new iPhone. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need Face ID or anything like that, but you know, just my dad trading in his iPhone 6S Plus, getting an iPhone 9 Plus. It's like, okay, I don't have to learn anything different, but now I get, you know, new battery life, new camera features. The phone just behaves faster. And to help save on manufacturing costs, I'm imagining neither the iPhone 9 or 9 Plus would have 3D touch. They're probably moving everything over to haptic touch 
stretch now, so that just saves them money, and you'd have a fairly easy to understand lineup for the sub $1,000 iPhones. I feel weird about this though. You know, when Apple first unveiled the iPhone SE, it was just in one size, but I guess back then the 5S only had one size, so they're replacing that now that there are two sizes Apple's trying to replace. Maybe it makes sense to do both, so I'm gonna say this report is possible but not confirmed so i'll give it a good like 70 percent likelihood of it happening just because nine to five mac is reputable thanks for letting us know about it though because it really gets my brain hurting thinking about the existence of another iphone at the last minute but feel free to let me know what you guys think of this report by hitting me up over on twitter joining my discord we can chat more about it there but can we just mention it'd be bizarre to have an iphone 9 and iphone 11 at the same time so they'll come up with some other names i don't know this is your option here i'll see you in the next one